A stent is a small metal scaffold like the spring at the tip of a ballpoint pen. And the stent can be put inside the arteries of your heart and the stent scaffolds open those arteries that get blocked up by plaque, what's called atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. Um, the stent can take an artery that's having a heart attack or that's going to have a heart attack or that is causing someone to have chest discomfort and it can prop that artery open so that blood can flow in a normal way through that artery. It relieves the obstruction and takes care of the blockage. Now while the stent can fix that one area of blockage, the stent doesn't cure the whole problem of hardening of the arteries that is, that is going on at the same time. To, to take care of that, a person needs to take an aspirin, and probably take a cholesterol pill, and possibly take other types of blood thinners and medications to help that global hardening of the arteries process get toned down. Um, but the stent can fix the focal area of severe narrowing in the artery that's causing a patient to have problems. There is some data out there that stents, particularly in some centers, are overused, and I think there is some truth in that. One thing I can tell you that we've done here at Baylor Heart and Vascular is we put a program in that looks based on the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association guidelines at every stenting procedure that we do. So we evaluate every stenting procedure that we do to ensure that they comply, that that procedure complies with the guidelines and the appropriateness criteria. And by doing that, we make sure the stents we're putting in aren't overused and are not inappropriate. So we take action to ensure that all of the uh, procedures we do, that the stents we put in are not overused and are for an appropriate indication. Well, there are risks associated with, with uh, stents, just like there are risks associated with having heart disease. But the risks associated with, stent, associated with stents are that a stent can clot off, rarely, which it does about one out of a hundred times that we put one in, or about one percent per year. Um, in order to keep that from happening, we treat patients with aspirin and often another medication called Plavix or Effient, which are blood thinners to help keep the stent from clotting off. Also, down the road, in the 6 to 12 or 18 months after a stent is put in, rarely stents can grow blockage or scar tissue back inside the stent, which can once again limit blood flow in the artery and cause patients to have chest discomfort again. Um, the newest generation of what we call drug-coated or drug-eluting stents have been developed, and they really minimize the chance that that regrowth can come. That happens now less than 10% of the times that we put a stent in. So realistically, 90 plus percent of the times that we place a stent in someone's artery, the stent behaves well for years and years and years. But there is a very small chance that a stent can clot or that the blockage can grow back within a stent. Um, also, when we do stent procedures, there are risks of things like bleeding when we put the tubes in a patient's leg. Um, a very, very small chance that a patient could have a heart attack or a stroke. And for those reasons, we like to make sure that all the patients that we're doing stent procedures on are appropriate patients to be treated. Well, there are three main ways that we treat heart disease. One we're talking about, which involves placement of a stent in one of the coronary arteries. Another option for patients who are significantly sicker or who have much more blockage in their arteries is bypass surgery, which involves opening up the chest and placing bypasses to reroute blood flow from good areas of, from, I'm sorry, from uh, good areas of the heart around the bad areas into other good areas of the heart. And finally, there's a fair amount of heart disease, coronary disease, that we can treat by medications alone without any type of stenting or bypass procedure. So the three main ways that a physician can treat patients with heart disease is with medical therapy alone, with medical therapy plus a stent, or with medical therapy plus bypass surgery. But whether you get bypass or whether you get a stent place, you should absolutely be on all of the appropriate medications as well anyway.
recovery for a stent basically involves usually being in bed after the procedure for four to six hours. After that, generally a patient can get up and walk around and should do fine. And almost every patient that we treat with a stent goes home from the hospital either the same day or the next day. Um, so the recovery is extremely quick. A patient may be a bit sore in the groin or in the wrist from where the tubes were placed to put the stent in, but recovery is almost always within 24 hours and patients are often back to work within 48 to 72 hours of having their stent procedure. Any patient that's told they need anything from a doctor uh, should always ask why. Why do I need a stent? Why do I need this medicine? Why do I need this other procedure? What is it going to do for me? There are basically two reasons that we place stents in people's coronary arteries. One is to relieve the chest discomfort that comes from heart blockage, and that chest discomfort is called angina or angina. Um, that's an excellent reason to place a stent. Stents have been shown to very effectively reduce angina in patients that have chest discomfort. The other reason to place a stent is if we believe that a patient's going to have a lower risk of having a heart attack or that a patient's less likely to die if a stent is placed. Those patients tend to be patients with a positive stress test, patients that come in with a heart attack that emergently need a stent, or patients that come in with a smaller type of heart attack where we place a stent to prevent them from having another type of a heart attack. So I think it's important to understand, and I think almost every doctor you would ask would be willing to tell you why it is that that stent needs to be placed. And the reasons are either to get rid of a chest discomfort or something similar like shortness of breath um, or other symptom that would be coming from your heart or to help make you live longer or prevent the possibility of a heart attack in the future.